Right. All right. I think we shall get started now. Um, thank you all for joining up the virtual event today, and I'm going to pass it over to you, Maria. Thank you, Angie. So we do one of these virtual events every month now, and our patients, um, both existing and new ones, and some of you may be attending who have already been to Cutis Clinics, and some may be brand new, have given us feedback that this approach of informing and educating is really helpful for them. Now we know that during the lockdowns, people had time or made time to attend these type of things. This will last about 35 to 45 minutes during a lunchtime session. And we hope to be able to continue to have them going out throughout the rest of the year and no lockdowns. So um, let us know how you enjoy it. And I think Ange might have said this, but if she didn't, um, it goes, it gets posted again. So if you have to leave early because your lunch break is up or something like that, it will be on our YouTube channel. And all you'd need to put into YouTube search is Cutest Clinics Skin Health. Is that about right? It is. Yeah. I'll, I'll also email you of all. Everyone who's um, signed up for the event, you'll receive an email from myself tomorrow. Actually, you might receive it next week now because we usually edit this a little bit. Um, and I'll email you all a copy of this so you have it so you can re-watch and go over it if, we, if you miss any explanation or want to, to, to recap on what we discuss. All right? Okay. So when you come for a consultation at Cutis Clinics, um, you'll soon when you enter the clinic, realize that we are a wellness clinic and that we are a medical nurse-led clinic and we're all about skin health and about feeling the best you can feel and also any little health messages that we can give you within the consultation is how we work at least because we run the medical model which is nurse-led. So today we're going to cover how the skin works because sometimes we cover this within the consultation, the causes of acne and congestion of the pores in the skin, pigmentation, whether that's caused by excess sun or hormonal imbalance inside the body, rosacea, which is itself an inflammatory condition, and any lesions that are a bit pesky like moles and skin tags and worse things, seborrheic keratoses, we can get rid of You don't even know what they are. Yeah, or can pronounce. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we practiced it for years, but we don't expect anyone else to. And then we talk about the regimes that are available. Um, and we've got some before and after images that are from our portfolio um, and also on our website that you can search again if you want to. And afterwards, we'll leave time for you to be able to anonymously, is it anonymously? It Ask is. a question. Yes. Yes. There you go. So remembering, back to basics, um, our skin is the largest organ and it protects us from the outside basically. So it's a barrier function and it works best when it completely covers, covers us and there is no um, uh, penetration of that barrier. So it's our best and first defense against anything that's external, like ultraviolet light, like rays of something else um, or chemicals. And this is not just a protective organ, it's a multitasking organ and it's part of our immune system. And I don't think if you haven't read extensively about that, it is generally recognized how much the skin is part of our immune system. So along with our gut, and by that I mean, you know, from the mouth right to where our food comes out, um, it's our primary interface with all that is out there, the external environment. It's important, isn't it? Because our skin and our face, particularly the skin and our face, is the first thing that others see about us. And they may be making judgments or opinions about us by what they first see. And of course, we're always touching it and scratching it and it shows bruises 
And of course, during the pandemic, we were aware of keep your hands down, not touching the skin, not a bad thing. No. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, you'll, you'll notice that if ever you're watching webinars or Instagram stories, how many times the, the um, person who's conducting the seminar is touching themselves or whatever. And it's uh, the skin is, is forever giving us messages like mm. a little itch here or a, uh, is my nose running or my no my nose feels red or, yeah. or my lips are cracked or things like that so um it is that set of diseases and problems that we sometimes see as a result of those itches because those itches could be the beginning of eczema um or psoriasis or something like that or even acne and um skin showcases it shows if we're unwell and of course it needs daily care morning and night and some people even care for their skins in their lunchtime yeah. certainly if you think about putting on you know moisturizing on the lips or something it's very important to us and it's interesting just as your intestines so your stomach your gastrointestinal system is constantly moving so is the skin but we just don't always feel it. But sometimes that's what those itches and scratches are. Yeah. And I think we forget that our skin is constantly shedding. Yeah. Therefore, it's really worth taking care of and feeding it because like Maria said, it's an external thing. We can feed our inside as we do with food, vitamins, nutrients, but we need to do the same thing to our external, which is the skin because it's the largest organ in our body. One of the ways to show yourself this is mm -hmm. if you're sitting in front of a sunlit, uh, you know, it's beams of sunlight mm -hmm. coming in through a window and you scratch your arm and you see oh, parts yeah. of yourself going up yeah. into the air. <laughs> Could uh, be upsetting, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if our skin isn't right, you can bet that something else isn't right about our health. So whenever we see anyone with an inflammatory skin concern on their face, we will ask them about things like their gut health and their overall health and not forgetting psychological health. Very important. Yeah, they all, they all, they all um, mix with each other um, and impact each other. And we are trained registered nurses and we specialize in wellness, anti-aging and the holistic person and taking care of our patients. So we, although we don't have any affiliations with labs, so we can't do things like allergy testing, we can certainly have an, an educated conversation with our patients with a medical foundational background to help identify and isolate causes or potential causes for upset skin, upset anything really, um, and just support you through that journey. And sometimes it's very simple. Most often it's quite it is. simple. And a referral onwards, if, we're, yes. um, if we can't uh, yeah. fix it ourselves. Yeah. There's a lot of information out there and we appreciate that it can be very confusing for someone Googling something mm. when you just want a straightforward answer and that's mm. what we can do. So what is the skin? So it's made up of many layers and this is sort of basic schoolgirl, schoolboy biology. Um, so the top layer of your skin is the epidermis and um, I rather like this slide because it's got a bit of a joke, which it's not a great neighborhood because everything there is dead. <laughs> so we all know that the top layer of our skin has already, it's, it's not connected to um, anything because it is in a constant state of being born at the lower uh, levels of the skin in the hypodermis or the dermis and then up it comes until it sheds off and then below the below the um, uh, hypodermis is the fat level and the muscle and you can see that it's yellow and slightly darker pink um, and so the the healthy skin cells are born in the lower part of the skin Um, I like to show this one, uh, the many layers of the skin, um, particularly uh, because um, it shows you that the hair roots are also in the, that part of the skin and also the um, uh, sebaceous glands that lubricate the hair roots. Um, you can see that at the side of that hair root. And of course, a bit later on in the presentation, you will see that other things we look after is hirsutism or excess hair. We also treat excess hair. So it's important to know where those things sit in the skin. Like this slide, um, it's 
what I like to show to anyone who doesn't understand, you know, why some spots are like a whitehead milia and why some spots are blind um, and they are like a cyst and they go very sore and no head comes on them. So the, the type of, this is the moving from left to right of the screen. You can see the yellow sebaceous gland duct, which is the healthy part of the shot of the slide, which is showing that nothing is enlarged or blocked. And then we move onwards to the whitehead where the sebaceous gland has continued to flow and the top level of the skin has not shed. Uh, so a couple of factors at play here. So the non-shedding of the skin has caused the blocked duct. Next one on, over time, the blackhead is when the skin um, has been, uh, where the blackhead is, it's an, an anaerobic uh, environment and that's turned black. And then we move on to papule, the one after it, and the sebaceous gland is still secreting. And you can see then that there is a lump on top of the skin. And then to pustule, which is the next one, the sebaceous gland is still secreting, the top of the skin and the duct and the pore is still blocked. And if there is no outlet and in its uh, most least sophisticated form squeezed out, which we're not suggesting that that happens, if there's no outlet, the duct and the hair will rupture underneath the skin thus causing nearby tissue to uh, necrose and die and um, you get scar tissue because the immune system gets very agitated. Yeah. Um, and we know that various things feed this immune system activity and you'll see little blue dots on there and that's representing things like bacteria as well, which will also bring on the immune system's attention it makes it sore and it makes it uh, scarred afterwards. So this process is a lot better if the patient, our patients understand that we take them through this information so that they can learn patients with their skincare regimes, which are medical that we put them on, and also their treatment regimes, which can be things like laser. Uh, and this is building a foundation of why what Maria just said, why we advise what we advise. And even if you don't suffer with consistent acne, you can still get acne, mask acne. I think it, most people have had some form of mask acne over the last year. And it's about preventative and an ongoing care for the skin and understanding what happens within the skin helps you understand why you need that ongoing care. Many reasons that people suffer from acne. So internally in the body, there's the hormones. Again, internally, the gut health. What's your diet like? Um, are you eating enough varied types of things in your diet? Um, have you recently been on antibiotics? Have you had antibiotics a lot over the last five years? Have you heard about probiotics? what is the action of probiotics on the gut and the skin? Um, so um, this is all of the, what we'll be considering when we see you in our consultations to deal with acne. And for those of you who may not be that interested in acne, later on in the presentation comes rosacea and things like that. So we just, just, we just um, grade your acne as mild, moderate and severe. And we treat all types of acne, and sometimes we may refer onwards to a dermatologist. So moving on to pigmentation, um, you'll soon get to hear that we at Cutis Clinics will refer to pigmentation as red pigmentation or brown pigmentation. And this is dependent on your skin type and particularly your race your exposure to the sun from childhood to now. Any hormones um, during uh, pregnancy, did your pigmentation become worse? Um, could this be diet related? We know that sugar 
is a, is a, a great inflammatory causer, and this is one of those uh, precursors, of course, to acne and to pigmentation. And also, if you've had post-inflammatory inflammation, that could mean you will scar or mark in a pigmentation, pigmented sort of way. Mm -hmm. And also, we need to know things like your outdoor uh, pursuits. Do you golf? Do you windsurf? Mm -hmm. Do you ride a horse? Because all of these things, because the wind also, as well as the mm -hmm. ultraviolet light, the sun can have an effect. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to add. <laughs> That's wise words then. Um, rosacea. So this is the third um, condition that we're looking at. It's a chronic and inflammatory skin condition. And it looks like the main area of those round slides, the bigger round circle. Under, under a microscope or with a keen eye, we can see red networks of blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And we will ask you about things like stress, triggers that might be alcohol or spicy foods. And we'll talk about the possibility that it is um, a, a sensitivity to a skin mite called the demodex mite, which all of us have. Clean people as well as not so clean people. We all have these mites and microorganisms. They've lived with us since we were in the caves. So this is part of our own, if you like, it's called the microbiome. Um, and sometimes we can be sensitive to our own uh, little things that are on the skin. So rosacea, and it is pronounced rose, asia, um, first manifests itself as facial redness, and it's sometimes caused, called the curse of the Celts. So I'm typical Celtish skin, quite pale skin, Fitzpatrick skin type two, and um, it's quite often thinner. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see little red veins that occur, but the difference between like red vein, sun and environmental damage and rosacea is that one is inflammatory, uh, which is rosacea and one isn't, it's caused by an, an external factor. If rosacea isn't treated, it can go on to go into, if you see the second circle along, bumps and pimples, and at its worst, skin thickening like rhinophyma, and even go into the eyes uh, and make a, a, a very red area in the eyes. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about things like eyelash and eyebrow cleansing, mm. which can help keep um, the demodex mite down and stop anybody who has rosacea from getting it too bad. And I just want to play Mythbuster right now. Mm. Um, and we're all about breaking down stereotypes, especially in this um, generation. And I think it's really important to identify that a lot of patients that have rosacea, it's, it can be genetic. So there's nothing that they have done or haven't done mm. to have this, but it does, they do live with certain stereotypes such as um, drinkers, alcoholic nose, and they think people, or embarrassment, and they get um, misunderstood that they are shy or embarrassed because they're flushing red or that they have an alcohol problem because they're when they don't red, yeah. when they don't yeah. so we appreciate that the psychological impact of all of these conditions because as Maria said at the beginning skin is you know the window to what you see when you look at somebody we we, we understand how much of a psychological impact this has on patients which is why we we take it very seriously mm. And I think at this point, I'd like to say it is health. It is not cosmetic because many of these things are turned away from GPs. And it isn't because they, they truly think it's cosmetic. It's because they don't have enough budget to, to really treat what they feel is classified as minor skin conditions. And in our world, we classify it as skin yes. health. Yeah, it's, it's not about beautification. It's about, it's about, like Maria used the word, wellness and holistic care and taking care of the person. And how we feel has a massive impact on how we look and vice versa. So now we go on to fourth or fifth thing that we treat that's as part of this um, presentation. We do take off benign skin lesions. And lesion is that medical word, word which covers all of the things from moles to skin tabs 
to separate keratosis. So that's Ange going to, uh, she's cool sculpting today, which is not on the um, skin uh, presentation, but she's cool sculpting today. So um, we're at work, as you can see. Anyway, getting back to this slide, um, you'll see that uh, on the left, we've got benign moles. And on the middle, we've got colorless moles. Sometimes people call them blind moles, but I think that's a, a, a lay term. And then on the right, the one on the right, near where you see the hairline, um, they are seborrheic keratoses, and they can start in the 40s, and they are like a pesky overgrowth of skin. They can even look like a cornflake, which is stuck on the skin and they worry people or they feel embarrassed about them and they don't want to talk about them. So um, sometimes they present to me or to Angela in clinic and people have them all over their trunk or their back and um, anyone who does not have hair on their head sometimes gets them on top of their head or along the, the temple region is another area. Now, you don't have to put up with them. They itch, um, they're a bit of an eyesore. People don't like them when they're putting on their clothes, they feel them and they get that sudden reminder, something's not right. And it's my opinion as, a, as an advanced nurse practitioner, why put up with it? Come and see us and we can treat them and we can take them all off. Now, with moles that are brown moles, we do like you to see your GP first to make sure that they are uh, diagnosed by another medical person as being benign. But with seborrheic keratoses, uh, we feel very happy about diagnosing those and we can take them off as well. Now, out of our team, and Angela told you we've got three clinics, um, they're each nurse led. So each of my clinics has a senior nurse in situ and we also have advanced skin therapists, but all of the um, skin lesions are taken off by the nurses. And I can tell you that we must have two or three a day, as well as the other things that we do, like the cosmetic injections and the consultations for acne. This is a slide that we've added because we forgot it last time. We do IPL and laser hair removal. And um, so it's a nurse and an anaesthetic practitioner delivered treatment in our practice. And I'm very proud to say that we've been doing these types of treatments for 25 years. So we were one of the first nurse led clinics in the country to have the medical grade lasers. Now, we started back in the noughties uh, the 1990s, should I say, and uh, we had uh, medical grade lasers then. And then in 2013, uh, lasers for hair removal and skin were deregulated, and we were able to train advanced beauty therapists in, in our practice and all the practices in the country uh, to deliver these treatments. And they have um, a core of knowledge in lasers as an extra qualification. And I have a BTEC in lasers and skin as well as my master of science degree so we're really well um, experienced and technical about these now facial hair removal I still see it as medical because if we have excess face excess hair on our faces it really is hirsutism so um, let me just admit somebody else Hello, we're on about slide eight, uh, for slide 13 actually, for the person who just joined, but don't worry, um, this will be recorded and we will send you an email if you have to leave early or if like the person who I just admitted has come in a bit later, you can watch this again um, over a cup of tea or coffee or a glass of wine uh, and um, you will see the whole presentation because we record it and we put it on our YouTube channel as well in case you don't get the email. So for the person who just joined, we've talked about acne, we've talked about moles and benign skin lesions, we've talked about pigmentation, and we've talked about uh, rosacea in inflammatory skin conditions, and now we're on laser hair removal. Um, and to recap, uh, as a nurse-led clinic and operating the medical model, we are about wellness and skin health. And this is not purely cosmetic, it's about being well and understanding that 
if you um, pay attention and have some self-respect to these uh, little things about us and decide I am going to do something about this because it will help me have better confidence. That's good. It's self-love. And with regards to hair on our faces, look out. We, we don't have to put up with it. So um, we do all sorts of facial hair, uh, upper lip, underarm, bikini um, uh, hair, legs, back, nipple, and chest hair removal, and we do men and women. So um, just to recap, we've got 25 years of doing that. So um, we have specialized in laser qualifications amongst the team. And um, it's just part of the suite of, of skin health treatments that we offer. So the benefits of IPL and laser hair removal is that it is permanent. So it takes more than one treatment, but you have a treatment every six weeks or so for about nine or 10. Sometimes people, if they have a polycystic ovary syndrome, they might need to have a few more. Um, but the hair that is in the growth cycle and is just popping up through the skin, the laser light will be attracted to it and it will be zapped and, and vaporized on that treatment. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something that you can do um, in a 30 minute appointment, so it's pretty quick. Um, we use the medical grade laser, the Linton Excel light system, and it's great. And we very, very, very rarely have any uh, problems with people who have been um, dissatisfied or unhappy. So if you choose Cutis Clinics, this is how we work. First of all, you'll have a one-to-one -one nurse consultation, and we usually do that like this, virtually. Um, that started at the beginning of the pandemic, that it allowed us to manage the flow of patients so we didn't have, as we used to have, um, uh, you know, full waiting rooms waiting for the treatment. So now we have all of the questions that are needed to be asked on your first meeting with us done like this on a half hour virtual consultation. And at that time, I will have gathered all of your health um, information. Uh, and uh, we'll be, I'll be able to uh, give you an idea of the costs, etc. And I will then push you up the queue uh, because I'm the boss and the owner of the clinic. So as soon as we finish the consultation, I get on the phone to um, any one of my three, four clinic coordinators and they will contact you within half an hour of having a consultation and you will have a, a preferred and convenient time uh, given to you. So um, each patient has a customized treatment plan. So we don't work like painting by numbers. Everyone has a different treatment plan. Um, we uh, have a, a customized clinical skincare regime. The products that we have for you to use at home are science-backed and evidence-based. We're nurses. What else would you expect? We don't have fashion products and we don't certainly do not have cosmetics. So they are clinical products that we would suggest. Um, we have the intense pulse light and laser and the percutaneous collagen induction, that's microneedling. Uh, we do mild skin peels and we have um, uh, a medical facial, uh, the cutis hydrofacial, which uh, we can um, design for your skin type and it can be used just as a standalone facial, although there are six facials in one in that. And we can incorporate intense pulse light or laser or skin tightening into those regimes. And of course, as a nurse prescriber, I can prescribe for your skin if necessary and where indicated. So not everybody needs a prescription, but this is just to tell you what a wide uh, base we have. So our clinical skincare regimes is based on things like active ingredients, science-based products. And at the moment we use uh, innovative skincare, which is a California based treatment uh, of skin products. And you'll see that lighter um, image on the slide is an LED mask and 
within the clinics, we have uh, LED masks um, that we apply at the end of the hydrofacial, and we can also sell them. And a couple of late uh, admissions in, this is Angela, and she's my nurse colleague, but she's uh, working, as we're both working today, but she has patients booked and uh, she just has to slip away to see a patient. So, what do we do for acne treatment then? After the consultation, we will decide and in a collaborative agreement with you uh, on what you should have. But a very typical regime is hydrofacial with intense pulse light. That's what IPL stands for on the slide. And proper skincare that you do fastidiously day and night. Because if you wanna change some things in your life, you've got to change some things in your life. So you have to commit to one, us looking after your skin completely and two, doing what we ask in the morning and in the evening and of course throughout the day with sunscreen. Maria, why would you combine a hydrofacial with IPL? What's IPL doing for uh, acneic skin? Well, it's is a great question because we've not covered uh, the P. acnes bacteria, which is that nasty little gremlin that lives on a lot of our faces, even the ones who don't get acne, but um, people who are prone to acne are super sensitive to it. So it's a microorganism called P. acnes, and it lives on the skin, and intense pulse light will kill it. Stone dead. <laughs> so the hydrofacial gets the skin ready for the intense pulse light, because what's the point of shooting the laser through skin, dead skin? It's a barrier layer. Mm -hmm. So it's probably better that we have that off mm -hmm. and that's taken off in the hydrofacial mm -hmm. so that the intense pulse light and the subsequent mm -hmm. therapeutic part of it is much more effective. It's, it's opening up all of your pores as well, clearing out blackheads and whiteheads. So preventative for future bacteria, um, acne, and then killing the remaining acne with the IPL. The combination is fantastic. Yeah. Mm, thank you. So we treat rosacea uh, and on the left uh, part of the picture is our I forgot to say on the last slide, actually, the left slide is our patient before and on the right is our patient after. Um, so you can see those tiny little papules that are very, very characteristic on the left hand side of inflammatory rosacea. And then you can see afterwards how it calms it down. Mm -hmm. So we use intense pulse lights and a, a, a calming and, and um, uh, an anti-inflammatory skincare regime from the East Clinical and frequent LED masks, which is the mask that sits on your face with 36, 40 light bulbs of different wavelengths that yeah. go on your skin that are also yeah. very good for soothing. Yeah. The LED mask that we use has got the, the most LED bulbs within one mask available on the market at the moment and a, and a, a really high wattage. Um, so it's stronger than the LED mask that you can buy for home use. Um, and the difference is that you, the home use one you would use more frequently, you would use that daily, whereas our LED you could, you could use weekly if you have a significant rosacea or acne, otherwise a monthly LED mask with our clinical um, medical-based LED mask is sufficient. This uh, next slide is one of our own younger clients and uh, she had sun damage. Many of us pick this up as children playing out as we all should be doing, <laughs> playing out in the open air. Uh, and of course, um, it looks a little bit like um, a bird's egg in that it's mottled and people yeah. nowadays, this, this girl is a makeup artist, Rosie, yeah. and um, she would like and has managed to get a flawless complexion by coming and having regular intense pulse light. There she is on the right, smiling uh, after she's cleared the, uh, her skin. Now, um, most of these things need to be done annually. Um, the um, getting rid of sun damage and uh, rosacea, is not curable, it's just manageable. And, uh, you know, if we keep going out in the sun and we've got melanocytes, which are the pigment cells at the top, just waiting to go, pick me sunshine, mm -hmm. and you get little mottly bits, um, 
you know, it's very important to know it's not a one-off thing. It's yeah. something to do with maintenance. It's like going to the dentist or the hairdresser. I'll say um, intense pulsed light um, for both red and brown spots is my favorite treatment on our menu and has always been my favorite treatment to personally have. It's one of the best ways, especially for those patients that aren't ready or don't want to have injectables. It's a really, really great treatment to keep you looking fresh and a healthy young skin because what it's basically doing in layman's terms is just washing away impurities if you think about it like that. Some people, especially younger generations, say, we, we, I like my freckles, and that's fine. You can keep your freckles, but they can be very aging as we get older because they you know, technically are age spots, which are caused from the sun. So by purely washing away those, and you do, intense pulse light does rejuvenate the skin at the same time because it just puts it into a hypercellular state of rejuvenation, um, is a really nice, purest way, if you if we like, to rejuvenate and keep a young, healthy, fresh look. This is an example of a lesion, a benign lesion near the eye. The left is before treatment and the right is a month or two after treatment. And don't be frightened if you know someone or you've got a lesion near your eye in that, oh, it must be dreadfully difficult to treat because for us, it's just another part of the skin and um, because we are qualified nurses and we're doing this all the time I just want to say that so that you're not frightened about thinking well maybe nothing can be done because certainly something can be done and if we think it's beyond us or beyond our nursing competencies we'll refer you to a dermatologist so still come okay so this is when we open up. If you have, if you'd like to ask any questions, uh, you can now. Uh, and if you just click down in the chat box and you just type in your question, I can see we have a few that have come up already. Um, I'll read them out, Maria, and I will just take turns answering them. I'll probably back them over to Maria. Yeah. Um, we'll only be another couple of minutes, um, and then we can wrap up, and you can go back to your sunny Thursday. Uh, so first question is, good afternoon. I have multiple little white spots around my eyes. Some of them flat, some of them are raised. What can you do about this? So that can be milia, that can be xanthelasma, and sometimes it can be an indication of you having high cholesterol in your bloodstream. And um, it's not necessary to go get that checked out, but it is something that we would talk about. Something can be done. We do very, very, very fine needle cautery uh, uh, using a numbing cream mm -hmm. uh, and then check you up um, about um, six to 10 weeks afterwards. Okay, next question. Uh, my son is 16 years old and has really bad acne, which really upsets him and he feels it disturbs his social life. Okay, um, is he too young for treatment and can you help? At 16, uh, by law, he can um, give a good consent. So he can uh, have a consultation with us. And we're very careful about dealing with people who aren't in work because we are a private practice. So ethically, it is uh, incumbent upon us to ensure that anything that we suggest is not going to uh, upset them psychologically if they don't feel that they can afford it. Mm. So we would possibly like to see your son with you, uh, but we wouldn't be talking to you. We'd be talking to your son and you'd be there um, so that um, you would be their best friend, their parent, their guardian. And um, most likely you'd be the person that would be paying for it. But I want you to be aware that we don't see youngsters without parental approval and collaboration. Yeah, yeah, collaboration is a good word. Okay, I think we'll say goodbye now because we're coming up to quarter past two and we're conscious we don't want to keep anyone too long. Thank you again so much for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate your time. And as I said at the beginning, I will email all of you at the beginning of next week with a recording of today's event so you can re-watch if you've missed any of it. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your long weekend, everyone. Yes.